Hey there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Over the last couple of videos, we've been looking at how agriculture has changed over time. Today we're going to be going into unit five, topic six, agricultural production regions. And before we get into this video, I need to make sure you know the difference between subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture. Subsistence agriculture is agricultural production that is done for providing food for a person's family or local community. The goal here is not to grow food for profit. This type of agriculture traditionally uses less machines and more human labor, with the average farm size being smaller. On the other hand, commercial agriculture is agricultural production that focuses on growing crops for profit. This type of agriculture traditionally has a larger farm size that utilizes advanced machines to help produce large quantities of crops. Here, less human labor is used due to the amount of machines that are utilized. Globally, we can see that countries that are located in the core or are more developed countries use more machines and have more commercial agriculture, while countries located in the periphery or less developed countries traditionally have more of their population working in the field of agriculture. Now, both subsistence agriculture and and commercial agriculture can also be classified as intensive agriculture or extensive agriculture. We talked about those concepts in our 5.1 video. Remember, intensive agriculture uses more money and labor to produce its products, while extensive agriculture uses less money and labor to produce its products. When trying to figure out if a type of agriculture is extensive, intensive, commercial, or subsistence, consider the following. How much land was used to produce the food? Did it rely more on machines or human labor? What was the intent of the food production? Was it for consumption or for sale? This can help you narrow down to see which category this type of agriculture would fall under. For example, if we look at pastoral nomads, we can see that this is an example of an extensive subsistence agricultural practice. This type of agriculture requires a lot of land. However, it does not require a lot of money. It's primarily done by hand. There's very little machines used. That makes it more extensive. On the other hand, too, for the subsistence part, we can see that the primary production of food here is for consumption, not for sale, which would make it subsistence agriculture and not commercial. If we look at cattle ranching, we can see that this type of agricultural production requires a lot of land and very few machines. Most of the work is done by hand. That makes this type of agricultural production classified as extensive. But here, the goal is to be able to raise the cattle for sale to make a profit. So we can see that this agricultural practice would be an example of extensive commercial agriculture. Oftentimes we can see that agriculture that's located near a market or an urban area is going to be intensive agriculture, while agriculture that's located further away from the city or market will require more land and less money and will most likely be extensive agriculture. This is due to the bid rent theory, which is an important theory that will come up later in this unit when we talk about von Thunen and also again in our unit 6 when we go into urban geography. The bid Bid rent theory looks at the price of land in relation to an urban area. As we move further away from an urban area, we'll see that the price of land goes down. Rents go down as well. As we move closer to a city or an urban area, we'll see that the price of land increases again and rents get higher. And this is because of population density and scarcity. There's more people living in urban areas, which means there's more demand for land. That drives up the price of it. And since the land is limited in cities and urban areas, that also continues to drive up the price. As we move further away, there's less people living there. Population density goes down. Our demand goes down, which means the value of that land decreases as well. There's more of a supply of land further away from a city than there is at the city or near the city. And this is that bid rent theory. We're looking at how prices change in relation to where we're living. Now, this is just one of the reasons why extensive agriculture is located farther away from a city. By locating farther away, they reduce the cost of their land. And since extensive agriculture requires a lot of land, this can help farmers become more profitable. And intensive agriculture doesn't require as much land, so it's less of a burden on them to purchase land near the city. Now, there's other factors that determine the location of agriculture as well, but we're going to get into those later in Unit 5. Okay, geographers, we're almost done with this topic review video, but before we wrap up, I want to cover monocropping and monoculture. Monocropping is when farmers grow the same crop each year. They continue to plant the same species of crop year after year after year. 
Farmers who practice monocropping risk soil depletion due to the lack of crop rotation. However, today we are seeing more and more farms use monocropping, and that's because of the possible profits they can get. When farmers specialize in a specific crop, they become more efficient at producing that crop, which allows them to make more money. Monoculture, on the other hand, is when farmers grow one type of crop at a period of time. Once that crop is ready for harvest, they may switch the type of crop they plant. This allows for nutrients in the soil to be replenished and prevents soil depletion from occurring. And just like that, geographers, another topic review video is complete. Now you know the drill, the time's come to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comments below. And if you still haven't considered subscribing yet, I mean, what are you waiting for? You're watching these videos. Try hitting the sub button, it's free. You can always change your mind later. It helps support the channel and it'll also make sure you don't miss future videos. And don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It's a great resource, covers all the units in AP Human Geography. It'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. Thank you so much for watching, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.